I want in a second to ask about whether the same technology can be used for you know all of those range of use cases because you've identified that procedurally there's some quite big differences aren't there? environmentally some big differences between going to an airport and buying a pint of beer um, but before before we get to that uh, I'm interested in, in knowing whether there are kind of good and bad ways of sort of putting these roles in place things that we should do or things that we shouldn't do uh, um, and Dave you've been very quiet so far which is interesting in itself because <laughs> I, I, I'm interested in what these guys are doing but I mean you know yeah. because I have a very kind of reactionary perspective I can only see this in in terms of us and in terms of the 3d id model that we use for everything around these kind of things so there's the question about the identification part like yeah. how do you bind the vaccine credential to the to the person in the first place there's the authentication part how do i know the person carrying this credential around is the actual person who was given it and then there's the authorization part which is well, what exactly does it enable you to do and how do you check it? and i of course we all agree 100 percent with andrew and frank we need to push this into the authorization space. It shouldn't be about identification. But my the, the thing I'm sort of curious about, again, given what they've built and that it works, is, is your point about the reuse of the underlying infrastructure. And I'll phrase it in a, I mean, I'll do it in a slightly pushy way to, to sort of make a point. But in the past, and certainly in our webinars, you know, and, and, and I'll lump you and I together for this kind of thing, we've sort of assumed it would be the government or the banks or whatever that would get it together and, and, you know, roll out digital. I don't know why we thought this. I don't know. There's not the slightest evidence they'll ever do this, but, but we sort of thought um, that would happen. And I wonder if what we're seeing here is the emergence of a different identity infrastructure that's going to come about in a much more sort of belt and braces way, but ultimately be more effective. And, and the reason I think that is because, if you say to me, well, Dave, you know, you're going to have to have a, a British identity card and prove who you are. To, well, of course, I'll riot in the streets and complain. You know, it's continental tyranny and the Napoleonic imposition and all this sort of thing. But you say, well, Dave, if you want to go to the spoons. So I'm using the demotic, Andrew. I'm trying to be a man of the people here. Is this, the spoons. That's the weather's <laughs> woking, you know. So, so if I want to go up the spoons or, or I want to go and see Woking play, I have to, if I'm just told you have to have your vaccines, then I'll do it. I don't care. Right. And, and actually 99% of the people in the country wouldn't care whether that certificate, I mean, this is my, I don't know if this is my, my yellow fever certificate, which is a highly anti-counterfeitable anti yellow paper. You can't get this yellow paper anywhere. North Korean super note forgers throw down their pens in frustration. <laughs> and most people wouldn't care i mean we have a responsibility as an industry to make sure that that, in, that infrastructure is privacy enhancing and to make sure that people's personal information isn't spewed all over the internet but actually i don't think most people would care it's like if you want to get in the spoons you have to have one of these passports they'll do it now to your point about the shared infrastructure i wonder if this isn't opening up an amazing opportunity for us because if i've got i mean let's do that as the thought experiment. I Weatherspoons have already got the Weatherspoons app. It already exists. They've already got people signed up to it. So Weatherspoons come and say, well, we want to connect into your infrastructure to do this. And so we tell them, well, OK, these guys have got great authentication and all this kind of thing. Uh, where are we going to get the test data from? Oh, God, I don't know. I know, IATA. They've got the test centers and they, the British Airways app has got the API. So why don't we just use... And you can, I'm just curious if you can see this, this sort of Lego building up. And then all of a sudden, where we were going to have a national identity card, which nobody wants and is a catastrophe, and they'll waste billions on it and all this sort of thing. Instead, we have a kind of national entitlement card, which it just comes out of it. You know, we have a way of carrying these credentials around that say, I'm allowed in to see Woking. I'm allowed into the Spoons. I'm allowed to book a table at this restaurant. Just growing. And I'm sort of excited about the possibility that you guys are in on just growing a, an alternative to the kind of identity infrastructure that's been talked about for years. And I just I'm really curious about how you see your stuff evolving. I think, Dave, I think you put your, your finger on it. I think two 